Hi, I'm Chris Merwindes, and hey, you can do this. From out of this. Because this is Air Windows Mastering 2. So the reason you're getting this is I've been working like crazy on reverbs, and what I've been doing is not quite done yet. It has allowed me to make some great strides in what I'm able to do with reverbs, and I'm quite happy about that, as well as audition and sort of reanalyze some of my previous stuff to see how well it shapes up against what I'm doing currently. And what I'm finding is like, okay, K Cosmos is standing up pretty well, as is K Plate 140, and, uh, and I have a bunch of work to do on the rest of them, but that's pretty much why I'm learning about new things. But that's okay because I have something that I can post. And I'll get back to the working on reverb soon enough and there will be stuff coming out on the back of that. This is Air Windows Mastering 2. And I've got it sort of hyping things up, like check this out. can get quite exaggerated here. Or we can go pretty much right back to unaltered. So the thing with a mastering plugin, you should be able to get exactly what you put in out of it if you set it to flat. For mastering two, flat is like this. We've got one extra thing in there. That is side pass. That's my elliptical EQ control. And I've had that uh, out for a while. It got involved in some of my work on the dub plate plugins. But in this case, what mastering two is able to do is cut a lot of weight out of stereo bass. The rest of it is the same as it was before. If you had found things with the original mastering that were working out, that should still be consistent here. What you've got is a batch of controls where, for instance, scope, that's this brightness stuff going on, scrunk, is a sort of mid-rangey yarliness and girth. It's not specifically any particular bass frequency. The whole thing is based on Kalman filters. So it's all about how much the low end can kind of come out at you. And this is not the most optimal song that I could demonstrate it on because Alien Kittens already peaks really loud. This will work better on stuff which is not already clipping. But it has a, a version of 80 clip 2 or clip only 2 built into it. So you can technically sort of laudinate. I just don't think it's a good idea to do that with this stuff. And it's basically for making fine tuning to the point where the glue control, it's a little hard to hear what it does. But if you're using your Windows meter, the glue control will be able to manage where your uh, high frequency peaks, which is the second uh, meter panel sip. And that's the main thing. That's the same as um, the previous one. Again, if we hype out the highs quite a bit. And then we use glue that's able to smooth out extremely high frequency sounds so that they're not scraping on your ear as much. Pull it back and you have your extremely high frequency stuff going on. There's not that much more to say about this, although it might have been a while since you heard of it. 
mainly it's just now it has a elliptical EQ built in because that seemed useful. You know, it seemed like a useful thing to add. And it's mostly about using those Kalman filters and making subtle adjustments to the shape of a track without stepping on it or modifying it. It shouldn't sound like there's EQing being done. Unlike, for instance, in Dubplate, and I do intend to put out the EQ inside Dubplate standalone because it's a new version of the Baxendahl filter. But then there's going to be a lot of new versions of things coming out because the uh, work on the reverbs pretty much guarantees I need to come out with the new K Cathedral. I've had three of those. I've done a uh, guitar hall and so on, and I've done the new plates. And K Cosmos is the, the best big reverb, but interesting thing about the work that I'm doing at the moment is this uh, reverb platform that I've made. And if you were following my live streams, you saw me develop this and then spring it on people at the last moment. Oh, hey, this lets you layer different kinds of reverbs, which was the surprise. And it was my little joke because that stream was on my literal birthday. So I thought it would be fun to do a elaborate, super hard work in getting all of the variations. Um, essentially, I needed to make it so that I could run uh, six by six reverb matrices, five by five, four by four, or three by three. And they'd all end up with about the same density, about the same ap amplitude, about the same sustain. And that way I can compare each of them with each other more easily. And I've been working out ways of doing that better too. And I'm quite excited. For instance, I have a little note that I made for myself. This is my new secret for how to evaluate reverbs after I've spent a lot of time generating my optimal ones. Turns out, with the thing that I'm measuring with, if I take its LUFS level and subtract max RMS from it, that maps pretty closely to how realistic it's going to come out, whether it is a large sustain reverb or not. And that's interesting. It means I get to uh, sort of stack rack them all in a completely different way, and it's already showing me neater, better sounding spaces than I had available before. Certainly better sounding than I have been able to put out before. I've got some new high scores that beat anything I've done. And that is very exciting. And I'm looking forward to running with that stuff. But uh, it's going to take a certain amount of time. So I hope you enjoy Mastering 2. And I'm going to get back to work. Because there's a, there's a lot of that to be done. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.